students tend to struggle with finding the domains of functions, but really it's not that difficult. There are two main rules that we need to get down though. We have two situations where we either could have like even indexed radicals or we could have rational functions, meaning like fractions. So if you have even indexed radicals, what we wanna do is make sure whatever's underneath the radical has to remain greater than or equal to zero. What's underneath, we call that the radicand. So that occurs in part A here that you'll notice that we don't wanna have any negative values overall underneath the radical. Um, this is a square root. So the little index that would be up here would be a little two. We don't always write that with a square root. But if you had a negative underneath here, that would get into complex or imaginary numbers. So we've got to be careful not to do that. The other situation kind of occurs in part B here where we have a denominator for a fraction or a rational function. In that case, what you want to make sure of is we're not allowed to divide by zero. So you want to make sure that denominator does not equal zero. Now, both situations kind of come up in the third example at the bottom. We'll walk through each one of these, go through graphing them, set builder notation, as well as um, interval notation to make sure we're all on the same page with that. So the first one in part A, what you would want to do is we don't care about that two out in front because it's not the index on the radical. Instead, what you want to make sure of is the radicand, the x plus four, you want to set that greater than or equal to zero. A little bit of simple solving down here. We're going to subtract four from both sides. Because we didn't multiply or divide by a negative, it doesn't switch the sign. We would only want to input values of x that are greater than or equal to negative four. So on a graph, what this is going to look like is you have negative four, sorry, negative four, negative three, negative two, et cetera. On a graph, you'd want to include negative four. So that's going to be a filled in circle. And you can only use X values greater than or equal to negative four. So that means shading everything to the right hand side forever. Now graphing them, I think that's helpful as far as getting to interval notation. So we have our graph, our interval notation for the same problem would be whatever shaded on our graph that goes from negative four as the left end point, and it keeps going forever off to the right hand side. So we'd say infinity is out that direction. Now negative four is included, so we use the square brackets. We can never get to infinity, so we use the open brackets or parentheses. And then finally, set builder notation. For set builder notation, you use the squiggly brackets and say X, and then a vertical line. For that vertical line, we say such that. And then all we do is we're going to cut and paste our inequality. So we'd say X values greater than or equal to negative four, and then close off our squiggly brackets. And that's all set builder notation is. On part B, what we want to do in that situation is we have a rational function. So we want to make sure that denominator six minus three X should not equal zero um, because it's a rational function can't be divided by zero. So you simply make sure that denominator is not equal to zero. Then a little bit of solving down here, we're gonna add three X to the other side. So that leaves us with six cannot equal three X. And then isolate the X by dividing both sides by three. So we'd say two cannot e equal X. On a graph, what that's gonna look like is we'd say, well, two's the important value on the X axis. Um, we're not allowed to use the two, so we'll use an open circle to say that value is left off, and then we could shade anything except for that, so anything to the left or anything to the right would be acceptable, because none of those values, anything except for two is going to make that denominator be zero. So that's our graph. The interval notation here, we have two separate shaded regions. The interval would be from negative infinity to two. We're gonna leave off both of those. And then a separate interval we have from two to infinity, leave both of those out as well. And then we're gonna put a union sign like a capital U in between here. And that's our interval notation. Finally, the set builder notation for this, it's gonna be squiggly brackets, the set of values of X such that, and then remember what we do is we take our inequality and you cut and paste it here after that vertical line. All right, the very last one here, we have both situations kind of come up. 
we'd want to make sure that our x plus 8, that's underneath an even index radical. So we'd have to say it's greater than or equal to 0. So x values have to be greater than or equal to negative 8, simply subtracting that 8 to the other side. But also, we have to be sure that that denominator should not equal 0. Add that 7 to the other side. And I don't want to use a value of 7 and only values of x that are greater than or equal to negative 8. So we kind of think about this on a number line for our graph. Well, negative 8 and positive 7 on a number line are the values that we really care about. The first part would say that you it's allowable to use negative 8, so a filled in circle. And normally we would just shade everything to the right forever. That goes along with the x is greater than or equal to negative 8. However, in this case, we said we're not allowed to use 7. So when we go over here to 7, we would want to use an open circle to indicate that that value is not allowed. All right, it's not included in the shaded solution set. So that would be our graph. Um, as far as our interval notation goes, we have two separate shaded regions. We have a region between negative 8 and 7. So that would go from negative 8, comma, 7. Negative 8 was included. So square brackets, seven is not, so parentheses. Throw a union symbol in between, and then a second interval to the right of seven, we go from seven to infinity. Well, we never include infinity. And in this case, we're not supposed to include seven because it had an open circle. So that's our interval notation to go along with this situation. And then finally, our set builder, we would say squiggly brackets, the set of X, such that, and this is where we go back to our inequalities, we're going to cut and paste those and say x values greater than or equal to negative 8, comma, x cannot equal 7. Close some squiggly brackets off, and we've got our domain represented three different ways on each one of these. All right, good luck.